It's like we're living in a sort of a twilight zone, real world twilight zone. Right now with this epidemic, coronavirus epidemic going on. It's like here in this real world twilight zone, you have in these free market ideologues that are, has reality slapping them straight in the face. Now for so long they've been kind of going along, these free markets folks, going going along on their train ride in their fantasy world. And they just pull down the shades of their train cars so they can't see out the window and see all those tent cities, sprawling tent cities. You know, see all the people that are living paycheck to paycheck. And everybody is in the stu all the students that are burdened with mountains of debt. They just keep on a narrow-minded focus, the, the free markets. People thinking, right, they're able to live in a fantasy world, perhaps up to this point, where they're able to think, up to, uh, until now, they've been just able to more or less keep on with their fantasy that somehow the free market works itself out and you don't need to have any government intervention in anything. People can just engage in their Ayn Rand pursuit of selfish desires. Everything's going to work out and all everything bad happens is because of the government and and they treat greed as though it were good and they treat vir vir uh, vir treat selfishness as though it were a virtue but now reality is kind of they kind of can't avoid reality anymore they they're kind of slapped in the face and woken up from their their slumbers of their dogmatic slumbers of their free market fantasy world. Now we're now they have to face reality. You know, there's uh, where we see a situation that we can no they, they can no longer ignore where selfish pursuits is not going to solve this current situation. Instead, it requires unselfish cooperation of the citizens and along with government help of the citizens and businesses massive government help and, and, and massive amounts of cooperation and unself and unselfishness among the citizens 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 citizenry around the world and it should show it should demonstrate clearly it should uh, undoubtedly falsify the ideolo ideology of Ayn Rand who literally wrote the book titled The Virtue of Selfishness. Now I wish there'd be some kind of uh, overt acknowledgement of the among those that have up to now maintained this absolute free market ideology and uh, ab absolute only uh, treating the government as only can only be bad uh, and we don't need the government ever the, the, the only, the only, they treat the act, act as though only the gov government can only do bad now I've never, I've never uh, uh, claimed that the government can only do good of course not, that's absurd the government is fallible like any other any other organization but I'm not going to say that it's always bad. It's run by fallible human beings. But it seems to be necessary in our society. Maybe at some, t at some point uh, humans will uh, progress to the point where they won't need a government. That'd be great. But reality currently is, yes, we sort of do. It seems like we do need some kind of form of government. And as long as we do, we should acknowledge it and... Uh, Recognize it and use it, utilize it to, our, uh, to its advantage, to the advantage of the people, advantage to the country. Now I think, uh, see, look, look over in China. They have a hybrid economy where it's a 
a hybrid between the capitalist market economy on the one hand and the uh, uh, communist command economy on the other. And there were the, they're trying to get a nice balance there. They, they're allowing this, uh, even though they call themselves the Communist Party that's running the country, they acknowledge that, the, the, I mean, they allow for a element that, the, they acknowledge that, that, that maybe, maybe market, market economy has its place, but they also are fully aware that it has its limits also. It's not going to, you're not going to be able to uh, organize a society around everybody pursuing their own selfish capitalist interests of pursuing wealth. There's no way to, you cannot run and organize a society based, based on, uh, based on uh, everybody's own selfish pursuit of wealth. They recognize that that's absurd. So, so they make sure that there is the overarching command economy and to uh, organize things, organize like say, plan and maintain roads and, um, you know, I, I don't know how much of a safety net they have. I mean, they, they could, I think they could learn a lot, the Chinese government could learn a lot from the U.S. US form of government with our Bill of Rights. Um, and where we've done, I think we've done a better, better, lot better job in terms of civil liberties in the United States uh, with our government. And I wish, I wish uh, um, China would recognize that and adopt an equivalent of the United States Bill of Rights. Um, but also, on the other hand, the U.S. should learn from China and see the recognize the benefits of a, of a command economy. Um, in a you know, or in a command economy, they uh, can just order something to be done, and then it gets done basically. And it's oversimplifying it, of course. But it, let's say that they China they built that that huge, just enormous hospital in just a few days in response to the coronavirus. Um, now that that hospital was not built. Because somebody got greedy, it's not. Based, it was not built based because someone someone was selfish, and wanted thought that they could make a make a profit off of it. It was built because the government people in the government decided the the, the society needed that hospital. It was a need, and they had the ability to build the hospital. So it goes it goes according to that adage from each according to ability to each according to need. Government had the ability to build it and there was a need due to the, due to the coronavirus epidemic for the hospital to be built. They need, the people needed it. Government had the ability to build it, so they built it. It's, it's like, a, like an old uh, Cecil B. DeMille movie with the character uh, I forgot his name, but yeah, the actor playing the emperor says, uh, "So let it be written, so let it be done," and it's done. They they order it, and it's done. And so, but in the here in the U.S., we don't have. Uh, there's we when we run into a situation like this that we're currently facing, they don't know. It's like they don't know what to do. We have either the, I mean, even the like the neoliberal corporate Democrats. They they seem a little bit uh, puzzled as to how to approach this crisis. And instead of they, they're kind of left flat flat footed, wondering well, what what do we do? <laughs> because most of these corporate Democrats, and of course the Republicans too, have been so long uh, been so devoted to capitalism. And corporatism, and depending on capitalism and corporatism to basically run things, and now when there's a crisis that can't be met through the selfish pursuit of of, of capitalism of, of money, then they, they don't know what to do because they're they're not familiar with that. 
both the Republicans and the corporate Democrats. They're, they're familiar with relying on capitalism to run things and organize things. And they don't, uh, so it, they're, they're, they're kind of left being, instead of being, uh, knowing, oh, right away, we need to do, do this, this, and this, they're wondering, oh, geez, what do we do? This just, res or the, 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 they just have to respond to it and re realize, oh, I guess, I guess the government is needed. <laughs> we, do, we do need the government after all. And so now they're trying, doing their best to, best that they can to hash together some kind of plan um, running around not really sure what to do even though you can look over and, and look over at China and they seem to have uh, handled the, the situation rather well more or less but uh, but here it's just a hap, almost haphazard response because even though we could be looking over to China and getting some little more ideas there, um, and specifically, we also be look look over to Cuba and ask. We should be asking for their help because they apparently have some. Even, um, even though there's no vaccine yet, they do have some possible treatments that have shown promise. So, like it's some type of interferon that they have, we should instead of uh, imposing sanctions and an embargo, we should be asking for some help from the the Cuban doctors who have been over in China already giving lots of help over there. Um, uh, yeah, again, Cuba, another communist country, where they, they have an excellent medical system and should, uh, that proves that you don't need uh, uh, the capitalism and selfishness, a selfish pursuit of wealth to run a optimal um, uh, program System since their medical system works does work really well. I, and even uh, even on the right wingers uh, acknowledge that Cuba has a good um, medical system, and they don't uh, and they, they they don't make a half bad cigar either. You know, cause of course, they don't. Write, even though some thought it is uh, uh, ironically a lot of the capitalists in the U.S. the big, the big shots they always want those Cuban cigars. They're the best. It's like, doesn't that, uh, don't you see the irony there, I wonder? For those capitalists, those big shots, big wigs, sm smoking their Cuban cigars. They're the best, making the best product there. It's a communist country. But they don't acknowledge the the irony there. So let, um, yeah, I, we, we need to... But that's what we need to do. We need to acknowledge that capitalism, the pursuit of, I mean, it, it has its place, maybe. We could allow the marketplace, the uh, pursuit of the, um, putting up a shingle, so to speak, uh, um, starting a business, uh, bootstrapping. Sure, it has its place, but it has its limits, too. You can't organize a society around... There's uh, Ayn Rand's selfish pursuit of uh, one's own interests. You, can't, you, you, you just you, you don't and then when you face a crisis like we are now, uh, you're, people uh, should acknowledge should become obvious now. Although I don't think people are even realizing it. Maybe there's they're only on a uh, call it a pragmatic or practical basis though. They'll they'll uh, they'll uh, uh, accept help and ask for help from the government, but things don't seem to be registering around there um, on a ideological level, which of course is why we're here. Um, they do in this haphazard response to the to, to the epidemic, and also why. Back in the uh, financial crisis, in 2008 and 2009, there were, the the co corporations were happy to get the bailouts from the government. But once some of that waned, and the the uh, the corporations, the capitalists, they were able to actually get a lot more wealthy after the crisis, while everybody else kind of did not recover so much, but 
the back then, yeah, yeah, of course they'll be happy to with for the socialism then, for the wealthy, but without a, without an ideological acknowledgement of the value of socialism. If anything, just the opposite. The the they go go along. They they just reject what helped them. So now, now here we are. Still having people across the political spectrum asking for help from the government without acknowledging, without ideologically acknowledging the value of of socialism, which is socialism is simply the government working to benefit the people. That's all it is. It's very simple. It's not complicated. And that's how, that's why the, uh, the, the Chinese were that's doing when they built the hospital, then the huge hospital, it benefited the people. It's government working to benefit the people. That's all socialism is. Um, so we need to acknowledge and the importance of the government in benefiting benefiting the people, benefiting the society, benefiting the environment. There should be an ideological acknowledgement of that going forward, now and into the future, rather than a continued fantasy world that so many have been living under. There's a remarkable irony at work here, I think. And so far as I believe that China is, in the not too distant future, is going to overtake the United States, surpass the United States economy. And the irony is that they're going to, they're going to win that the survival of the fittest contest because China does not believe in relying on the survival of the fittest economic system, economic ideology. What I mean by that is, here in the United States, there's too much reliance on that capitalist survival of the fittest ideology to run things. But in China, they don't wait for some capitalist who sees it in their best selfish interest to build a massive new hospital to house all the new coronavirus patients. Instead, the, the Chinese command economy recognizes the need to build it, so they build it. China does not wait for some capitalists to see it as in, in their self, best selfish interest to build a high-speed rail system. Instead, the Chinese government saw the need for it and uh, thought it would be the best for the for the people, so they commanded that it be built. But in the United States, they don't know what to, they don't know what to do. They don't know whether to rely on capitalism or think that well, maybe we do we need or or on the other hand, they think oh, well, maybe in this case we need the government to do do something. Um, they, um, so yeah, they. But instead, like in the, in the United States, there's too much reliance on waiting for some some capitalist to do something in their own selfish interests that hopefully maybe will benefit the rest of society or make some uh, unsafe assumption that whatever the, whatever the capitalists want is going to be what, what the people want and need. Um, and such a, such a naive assumption, such an unsafe assumption. Uh, and, but yeah, and here in the United States, go this, this survival of the fittest economic free market economic ideology is oftentimes sub subscribed to by the highest echelons of power of the elite among in, in, in the United States and the government and the businesses uh, ideologically so that's what's going to drag us down I think that's what's going to hold us back in the the so-called survival of the fittest among the nations China's going to win it because they do not believe in survival of the fittest economics, economics uh, ideology, at least not in order, not as a way to order and organize uh, a, a government societal system. They're, they they recognize that we cannot we cannot depend on that. 
They, they cannot depend on on survival of the fittest to organize and order a society. Um, they clearly recognize the limits of the capitalist marketplace. We're in the United States. We don't know where that line is, and, and only a, there's only a vague acknowledgement of the the need for government to build things when when, when necessary, where, where there's a need. And we can't, can I, where, and I, there's only a vague acknowledgement that maybe the government has to do things where it's not going to be in the interest, selfish interest of some capitalist to, to build something or do something. Um, and that's going to hold us back because we need, it's like, that, that's, a, you know, it's kind of another irony is this, the, the, the right wing uh, current ideology where the, the people say, oh, let's make America great again. Um, but they're they're hearkening back to a time when there was more of an acknowledgement of the uh, more of a of a command economy, where they built the national high, highway system, the freeway system. Government built that, not out of some capitalist selfish interest, but to decide that they that it's something that the the people needed. So we built this amazing national uh, freeway system because the government had the ability and the people had the need for that national uh, uh, the fr freeway freeway system um, so they would go that that goes back to a time when you know so there was taxes were a lot higher on the wealthy back back then too and the, 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 and the, the greatest generation is called called that not because they were selfish, but because because they were unselfish, they were selfless. But now, in the modern modern era, the people are saying, "Go back to that era." They're subscribing to a free a, a Ayn Rand selfishness ideology, where. Everybody is pursuing their own, own uh, selfish interests, and somehow that's supposed to. We're supposed to. Everything's supposed to work out, but instead, what we end up is a, a government, a whole society that will degrade as wealth gets concentrated and in, into the top. It, the environment gets gets degraded as the capitalists see in their best interest to not properly process their the waste of the factory which I'll acknowledge actually in China they, they haven't done such a great job there either you know they, they're not perfect there of course not over there in China they, they could do a lot better job in, in environmental regulations there as well that's where there's a need the government needs to, whether it's China or the United States or wherever, the government has needs to keep a rein in on the capitalists, because otherwise they're gonna, they're just gonna dump the the factory waste out the back door, because that's the cheapest thing to do. You know, they'll, be, they'll be able to get a higher profit margin on the products they sell, because they, they don't have to spend all that 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 capital expenditure on uh, process, properly processing the factory waste. That's expensive. They can save a lot of money if they don't if they just dump it out the back door of the factory. If with and if there's not going to be any government regulation, that's what they're going to do, because they're going to be able to make a better profit margin. They have less exp lower their expenses. There's the price and, sp and then the expenses down here, and so they can keep the if they keep the price expenses down, they can and the price stays the same. They can make it in the margin gets bigger. So their expenses go down. Make make more money. That's that's the capitalist the goal. Make more money. Have a higher profit margin. So the only way to stop them is to have uh, government regulations to uh, make sure that the factories properly dispose of their waste. Make sure the uh, manufacturers produce a safe product for the consumer. Make sure the, the the business treats their workers 
um, in a safe, good way, in a safe work environment. Um, but yeah, there's but but yeah, that's I still but I go yeah I still go back to the the irony though I think that the yeah the China, China still is gonna surpass the United States because there are uh, not they do not believe that the uh, the 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 economic Darwinism uh, will have the theory of you know economic evolution for the best uh, or the most profitable profitable business uh, run things I mean at least as, as a whole a government system a whole societal system they don't depend on on that principle to run their run their society rather they have use a intellect in determining what the needs of society are and command that those needs be met by the government insofar as those needs are not meant but met by 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 uh by capitalism reason reason the United States we're often binding by depending on entirely or almost entirely on capitalism to meet almost all of our needs and that's where we're I think it's going to cause a failure of our, our of our system of our economic system because the needs of society by no means always meet the wants of the capitalists and the capitalists are basically operating according to their wants they want more money and that's what they're especially in the terms of publicly traded corporations there's an obligation to the shareholders to meet the they call them needs needs of the shareholder or the is it a need or a want but regardless their obligation of a corporation publicly traded corporation is to the shareholders not to society at large but there's such a huge dependence on especially large corporations in the, in the United States even though those corporations are under a legal obligation to look after the interest of the shareholders that's their, their primary directive looking after shareholder value not US citizen value shareholder value and that's about it and if we're depending on that um, then it's just an unsafe assumption that what's good for the shareholders is going to be good for the rest of the country because it's, there's, there's no reason to believe that it will be a, a shared value there there's, it's, there's, there's no verification, no attempt to verify that the needs and wants of society meet the needs and wants of the shareholders of a corporation. And so, but but that that assumption is still made by much of much of the uh, legislators uh, in the mainstream media. Of course, mainstream media is mostly made up of corporations. So that's a, another conflict of interest there. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.